This week, we will be looking at a comparison of health among developed countries, developing countries, and underdeveloped countries. The objective this week is to examine the United Nations Millennium Development Goals and progress towards meeting these goals and how this relates to health among developed, developing, and underdeveloped countries. Key terms and concepts for this week include the United Nations, which was founded in 1945 and has one mission, which is to maintain international peace and security. The word millennium means a period of time equivalent to a thousand years. Evidence-based nursing practice, which is a problem-solving approach to practice that involves the conscientious use of current best evidence in making decisions about patient care. Population, which is the total number of people. And human rights, which everyone has equal and inherent rights regardless of nationality, race, sex, religion, or language. Management of healthcare. There is tremendous variation in the way healthcare is financed, managed, and utilized. Many of these differences impact outcomes of healthcare. In developed countries, healthcare costs have soared and costs have become a primary concern. Effective population control and better control of chronic diseases has contributed to an aging population. In underdeveloped countries, access may be the primary concern. And while people seem to have unlimited wants and needs for health care, there is a limit to funds available to achieving health desired outcomes. Healthcare economics. Healthcare economics is a field that has grown in response to the need to balance needs and funds. As part of understanding global health care, nurses need to know at least the basics of how this balance is addressed. Roles of nurses and physicians. More and more nurses are becoming involved in the decision making. In the United States, nurses are assuming roles traditionally filled by physicians. Physicians have been fighting against advanced practice nursing from the beginning. In some other developed countries, advanced practice nurses provide much of the care and physicians provide specialized care and surgical interventions. In other countries, advanced practice nurses, nurse practitioners, and PAs are considered at the same level of physicians or doctors, but that is not the case in the United States. Continuation of roles. For example, in many countries, most births are attended by midwives. These may be direct entry midwives, nurse midwives, or lay midwives in developing countries. In developed countries, midwives provide prenatal care and birth attendance for all healthy pregnancies. Physicians provide care for especially complicated pregnancies and perform cesarean sections, perhaps one of the reasons for the dramatically lower cesarean rates in other developed countries is that physicians are not around to make the decision for a cesarean just because labor takes a longer time. Cost of health care. While the United States spends more for health care than any other country, there are still millions of Americans, as well as illegal aliens, without basic health care insurance. Providing care for the uninsured drives up costs, which are passed on to the insurance companies, and result in higher premiums and co-pays for those who have insurance. Some of these people, especially children, could be covered if their parents signed up for government programs. This is not always available in developing and underdeveloped countries. Continuation of the cost of health care. Managed care was an attempt to manage costs, often by managing or denying services. Some of these uninsured people today are people who have had health insurance most of their lives and have recently lost jobs. Therefore, insurance coverage may not be able, and, and also insurance coverage, and they may not be able to afford health insurance premiums, which can be as high as $1,500 a month for a family or $500 for an individual. In underdeveloped and developing countries, people don't always have this option and there are no choices for health care. Health care reform in the United States. It's a very hotly contested issue in the United States, and you will see this in the political arena, 
whereas underdeveloped and developing countries don't necessarily have the debate that's present in the United States. Below is the link on health care reform and the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act and explains the intent very well. Profile of the United States health care system. The United States spends more on health care than any other nation. They spend more on pharmaceuticals than any other OECD, which is Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development member country. They rely extensively on private insurance, mostly through employers impacted by recession. In other developed countries, such as Germany or Canada, there are nationwide government health insurance programs. In underdeveloped and developing countries, health insurance is not always an option and is considered a premium. Managed care. It's a contractual agreement between an organization and employer. Employees, often in, even physicians, are salaried rather than paid fee for service. Medicare insurance for people ages 65 and older, Part A, which includes hospitalization and some nursing home, and Part B, which includes physicians, labs, and medical supplies. It does not pay for most prescriptions, but the Prescription Drug Act in 2005 provides some relief. Again, this is managed care in the United States, but is not necessarily the same in other developing or underdeveloped countries. Medicaid coverage is for low-income people on public financial aid. Physician visits, hospital stays, and nursing homes are all part of what is covered under Medicaid. The states have the authority to determine the benefits. It is not at the national level. And fewer physicians and nurses per capita than OECD average. Nurses in advanced practice roles are becoming more accepted and are now getting qualified Medicaid numbers to provide care, meaning that their services are reimbursable under the Medicaid Act. Retail prescription drugs, which is about 11% of health expenditures, which includes costs that are rising faster than inflation, and a lot of times certain medications are not covered by Medicaid or only generic specific medications are covered. There is a high consumption of Medicaid coverage for the over 65 age group who are no longer receiving health insurance through their employer, and the most expensive treatment for premature newborns with respiratory distress. They also were typically covered under Medicaid. Again, Medicaid is an option here in the United States, which is not the same for other underdeveloped and developing countries. According to the textbook, there are key components of an ideal health system, which include access to care, health care professionals, infrastructure and technology, and access to care, which includes allocation of scarce resources based on the value of human life. Further key components of an ideal healthcare system include a financing system, which could be public financing or private financing, and then also payment methodology. Determining payment methodology is a key decision in the healthcare model. We must encourage medical providers to provide the appropriate amount of care. When providers are reimbursed on a fee-for-service basis, the more tests they perform, the more money they receive. However, if providers are paid a fixed amount to care for a given population, known as capitation, there may be an incentive not to provide needed care. Some of this happened with the managed care systems existing now in the United States. Another alternative is cost-based reimbursement. This does not encourage efficiency in delivering care. And again, this deals with the United States and not necessarily other developing or underdeveloped countries. Public policy decisions are based on public health, a safety net, end-of-life care, and litigation costs. As we know in the United States, litigation among healthcare continues to increase dramatically, and so this is something that needs to be addressed for public policy. End-of-life care as an example. End-of-life care in the United States is extremely costly. For example, a local retirement home charges a minimum of $2,500 per month for healthy residents. This does not include any nursing care or medications. Long-term care facilities typically charge far more than this, and Medicare either pays nothing or only a very small portion. Medicaid will cover a portion of long-term care, but many facilities refused to admit Medicaid patients. 
In Canada, long-term care is a fully covered benefit. Again, each country has different rules regarding end-of-life care, but in underdeveloped and developing countries, this is considered a luxury. Lawsuits in the United States regarding health care. In the United States, lawsuits are extremely common. There is a pervasive belief that people who are injured in the health care system not only deserve compensation, but deserve additional money for stress, emotional distress, and such immeasurable and tangible outcomes. When the cost of health care is the responsibility of the employers, that cost is built into the products they produce. In the textbook, there is an example of General Motors paying more than $5 billion on medical benefits for their employees. The cost of that works out to more than $1,400 for each vehicle sold.